Well, welcome back again this week to another analysis behind the news. You know, government has a propensity to create a problem and then to provide a solution to that problem, and usually the solution means more government. This is what's going on in Europe right now. And it, of course, it's doing it, uh, they're doing it in the United States. But one of the things that's happening in Europe that's been in all the papers and on TV and everything else is this massive influx of refugees from the Middle East. Now, it's made to look as though they're all coming in from Syria. Nothing could be further from the truth. They're coming in all the way from Central Africa, all the way up through North Africa, and coming in through Italy and places like that on boat and flooding into Europe. But they're also coming from all over the Middle East, from Pakistan on through all the other stands and into the Iran and Iraq and Syria and so on and so forth, flooding into Europe. Now, once in a while they'll show you pictures of women and children and that sort of thing, but the influx is primarily men under the age of 30 years of age. And uh, it's not doing much for the population of Europe. Things are happening there now that are becoming quite a problem. I invite all of you to go to YouTube and your regular Google or whatever search engine that you use and look up things like Muslim violence in Europe and take a look at some of those videos. Regrettably, some of the videos are made with a particular bias. Uh, and that's disappointing to see. We don't want to be against people because of their color or their religion or that kind of thing. Uh, but nonetheless, these videos and articles do capture the, what's happening in Western Europe. Now, what's going on is a change of all of European society as a result of this. And as a result of that change in the society, it will change the governments of Europe. They have been indoctrinating children for years in the public schools, and you will see that in some of these videos, with the idea that we have to uh, welcome in all of these people from these divergent countries. That our country is your country, kind of an attitude. Even in the schools, they're starting to teach the native-born children the, the idea of using the symbol uh, that the Muslims have been using lately, and you might notice this in some of your viewing on the major news because they don't explain what this means. And this is a symbol being used by these, these uh, Muslim militants. And it points heavenward, and it basically says there's just one God, and that God is, is Allah. And so they're teaching that in these schools in, in Europe. Uh, and they are growing up with the idea that we've got to allow all these people to come in at, at their will and in some cases literally taking over the, the cities and the villages. There are some places where they have dumped people down in small villages that have exceeded the number of inhabitants of that village. Completely different people, uh, different religion, different habits, different everything. Now, some of these people are not demanding uh, food, they're demanding money. So they can go buy the food that they particularly want, but also to send some of that money home, which is kind of interesting. They don't even want to work for it. At least a lot of the immigrants that have come into the United States, they work here and they send money back home from their wages. Now, these individuals don't even want to do that. They want the money so they can send that money back home on, on the dole. It's becoming a serious problem with violence, changes in local government and everything else. Again, go to Facebook, I mean uh, YouTube, and just the regular in, uh, search engines and look up Muslim violence in Europe. You will be shocked at how much there is and how many videos are available uh, for you to watch. Uh, you don't want to become biased against these individuals based on their color, their religion, or anything else. But, you know, law is law. Uh, good society is a good society. These people are, are breaking it down. Now, the, the policies of the European socialists through the European Union, 
have created this problem simply because now they can give you the solution of the EU looks to take over border control. Now, of course, in the process of doing this, you're going to lose a little sovereignty over your own borders, as it points out in this article. But hey, it's all for the best if we're going to solve the problem, is to surrender your sovereignty to a big brother, to a bigger government. And keep in mind that the larger the government, the more corrupt it can become. Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And they're destroying the indigenous peoples, the indigenous societies of Western Europe to replace it with a one world government uh, called the European Union uh, as a region towards this one world. Uh, anyway, again, I really do recommend that you go on your computers and, and take a look at uh, Muslim violence in Europe. Another thing that appeared last week was a number of demonstrations around the city of Chicago where the mayor, Emmanuel, is saying, now I'm sorry for the mess that I've created. Well, the interesting thing is that these people that are all out in the streets and demonstrating all through Chicago, tying up traffic and so on and so forth, are not, trying, are not conservatives <laughs> who are trying to get Chicago to reverse its course relative to taxation. What they're trying to do is to make sure that all these taxes go where the community action groups want them to go, into benefits uh, for various uh, folks around town, not just to maintain the police and, and, uh, in, and the fire and the schools and that sort of thing, but to get involved in all of these social programs. And it's becoming a serious problem where these social programs are being pushed by these community action groups. Uh, one thing that we've mentioned before that I think is necessary to mention again is that now it's come out that the federal government has been funding these community action groups. Uh, and they, they seem to be always available to get out into the streets. Like they don't have a job that requires them to be somewhere uh, to earn a living but they can come and go as they please in various demonstrations uh, wherever they seem to be needed, whether it's Ferguson or whether it's Chicago. So these things are going on and they're made to appear as though they're spontaneous reaction, uh, reactions by the community itself. They're not, they're well organized and they're all from the left. In fact, if you look at the signs that they're holding and everything else, it's all the same old slogans from back during the communist demonstrations in the 1960s and 70s. So we need to keep our eye on that and get our understanding toward, uh, you know, to, to seeing what's really going on. Because if you don't understand what's really going on, you can't solve it. If you think it's just a bunch of people from your community, they're not. These are paid people to be out in the streets. Whether again, whether it's Ferguson or Chicago, take a look at the signs and and save some newspapers over a period of time of these demonstrations, and you'll see periodic over a period of time these signs all are the same, whether whatever city they're in or anything else. It demonstrates organization, and that organization comes from the left, the communists and socialists. Until next week, we'll see you then.